and never less normal temperature. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, as I thank my colleague uh, with whom we are co-moving this uh, motion, uh, the member for Mosop has already set the basis um, that on Thursday the 17th um, of November 2022, the government issued a, a directive that in effect would allow the importation of 10 million bags of GMO maize. Um, and secondly, Again, as this background, there was a cabinet directive on the lifting of a 10-year ban on the importation of maize. Whereas my colleague has focused largely on the question of its impact or effect on the farmers in Rift Valley, I would like to cast this debate in a much larger perspective, namely, first, in three lights. One, I want to underpin it in terms of the authority of this House, and Madam Speaker, members, under Article 94.5, the provisions there are very clear and they state that no person has the authority to make any provision that has the force of law other than Parliament. So against this debate, we must always remember that we also have the Statutory in Instruments Act and a committee which we have set in place in form of the Committee on Delegated Legislation. It is my position that under Article 94.5, and the Statutory Instruments Act, a decision as serious as one lifting the ban on GMO ought to have the seal of approval of this House. The second point that I want to underpin this debate is Article 118 of the Constitution as read together with Article 1. The power that we exercise in this House, we exercise an indirect power donated by the people of Kenya under Article 1. Under Article 1, the sovereign power can be exercised directly or indirectly. When they exercise it directly, they may exercise it by way of a plebiscite in a referendum, by way of a vote in an election, by way of being engaged in public participation. The lifting of this ban has been done against the background of a 10-year lift, and that lift together with the report of a task force that was put in place to inquire into the health, safety, and other impacts of GMO introduction into this country, that report has never found its way into this house. That report has never been subjected to the committee that oversights the questions of delegated legislations and regulations in this house, Madam Speaker. Secondly, or thirdly, the other point that I wish to underscore is a statement that was made by the Cabinet Secretary for Trade. The Cabinet Secretary for Trade appeared to be suggesting that we could as well import GMO because there are a thousand ways in which people could die in this country. So introducing another form of death appears to, be, to him to be something that is so casual. And the point that I want to ask that this House considers is this, that when a Minister of Trade makes such a statement, can we ask that Minister that we can actually then as well be saying that it is better to carry out or to engage in sex without a condom because there are a thousand other ways in which you could die. I want to suggest that we donate the Honorable Moses Courier to Koinange Street, where we can keep you for one year to have sex for, for free, without condoms, because there are 10,000, 1,000 other ways in which you could die as a Kenyan citizen. So this is the casual manner in which this matter of GMO